Hi, everybody, and welcome to a very exciting, visual, poetic, creative episode of Words, Images, and Worlds. I'm joined on this episode by one of my favorite people in the world of creating, and that is Jarrett Lerner. Jarrett, thank you so much for jumping on and talking with me today. Thank you for having me and for those very kind words. I'm very excited to be here and honored. Well, well, I, I am honored as well. And, and truly, uh, you're one of my favorite people for a couple of reasons, one of which is that there was this whole thing that happened called the pandemic, which is still going on sure. in some ways in some places. I have a vague memory. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was a year or two that feels maybe three years. Maybe it was 10. I'm not sure. Yeah. But I remember, you know, all of us were in our homes and we were all connecting online and doing things um, as much as we could safely. And I remember you being one of those voices that was out on social media that was like, hey, kids, look, here are some activities you can do. Because at the time, I was also trying to engage kids online, as mm -hmm. many of us were. And I just remember, I think that was the first thing that kind of brought you across my radar and then I thought, okay, there's there's Jarrett Krasowska, but then here's Jarrett Lerner, and I was like, it's another it's another wonderful and creative Jarrett. And so it, it was great to connect there. And then you and I talked about two years ago um, on a Zoom meeting about yeah. hunger heroes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, um, I mean, yeah, what a time. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that. Uh, those activities connected me with a lot of people in a lot of cool ways. It's really um, beyond the specifics of what I made and, and, and the, what I got back from kids and, and the way that I've seen those activities continue to be used on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Still um, that really confirmed for me that you, you do good things from your heart and you put good stuff into the world and you reap uh, benefits like you couldn't imagine. I mean, it connected me to so many great people, including yourself, but, um, yeah, that, that's one of the, the silver linings of, of that whole, um, couple year, um, three year, maybe yeah. 10 year uh, <laughs> thing that we endured. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the other reasons why you're among my favorites is you just continue to amaze me with the work that you do. And I love the way you speak to human beings and uh, Work in Progress is the latest book that comes out that's come out. Um, I know you probably have several other things in the pipeline as well, but just love the book. I'm a verse novel fan, first of all, uh, probably started writing poetry middle school I want to say I started writing poetry in middle school so I appreciate um, the poetic but then I, I've been making comics since I was like six or seven or younger so um, it's a great book that brings together a couple of things that I love and uh, really tells a very human story too so there's a lot there to appreciate yeah that's interesting I uh, that tracks um almost identically to me, um, make, making comics when I was in elementary school beginning. And then um, the book, the form of the book, this illustrated novel and verse that's framed as a notebook, it's modeled after the notebooks I kept in middle school, which before I understood what free verse was, I was writing in free verse just because I found sentences and forming perfect sentences um, restrictive when I was trying to get my thoughts and feelings out in a, in an efficient manner. Um, and so I sort of happened upon free verse accidentally and, um, it's sort of what I started writing in, I think, but, um, yeah, it's interesting that we have, we have a similar history finding these forms that we've now fell in love with and explored more as adults. And the thing for me that connected me and, um, uh, made me start wanting to write, beyond using pictures was a teacher that just said, Hey, you're, you're a good writer and entered my writing in a contest. And that was the thing from then on, uh, I've wanted to write and have written. Um, and it sounds like the, so there was a lot of like living experience that was part of your inspiration too, which, which was the same for me. I was exploring faith and what I wanted to be in the world and all of those things. Yeah, well, this book in particular is a work in progress. is is my is my my life, you know, fictionalized to make it more 
to make it more accessible and powerful for mm-hmm. for for my audience. Um, but yeah, it's it's in large part my life. Uh, unlike any other book of mine, um, a lot of that lived experience. Uh, yeah, and that I imagine that was some some vulnerable work to do as a writer. Yeah, this is the the hardest book I've ever the hardest book I've ever made. Um, I just, you know, I usually for the books, every book I've worked on previous to it and every book that I've worked on now after it, I, um, I, it, it, it gives me something. I, I leave work after working on for the day. I, I leave with something, um, positive it has given me. And, um, even if I'm exhausted and even if I'm in a challenging spot and trying to figure out a problem that I'm having trouble with, I take some joy and some excitement and some pride from it. And this, all of that sort of positive feedback, it all came once the book was out. So I was just in the thick of it for three years, really not getting much out of the process, just really, you know, like, think I, I I sort of think of it as like I was a wet rag and I was like wringing myself out and not getting filled back up and just sort of ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and now sharing the book with the readers and getting feedback from readers and connecting with people young and old over yeah. the book that has been like the thing that has filled me back up but typically just the process itself fills me up a lot and keeps me excited to sit down and work every day but this one was a whole different entirely different beast that i was not prepared for yeah yeah lots of inward looking and um i get to i still of course follow you on social media so i'm starting to see over the past month i've seen these wonderful school visits that you've been on Mm -hmm. um and some of the interaction which which looks like it seems like you're having a really good time doing that yeah, you know, it was terrifying at first. I, I was scared like I haven't been scared in I don't know how long before my first couple school visits with this book. And um, I actually, at, at, at my official launch for the book at my indie, at the indie bookstore that I call my my home here in my in my hometown that I'm lucky enough to have the Silver Unicorn is where I launch all my books. Um, uh, another fantastic author and incredible human being Linda Mullally Hunt was kind enough to come to my um, launch party and I said I start school visits for this book tomorrow like what do you have any advice for me you get up on stage I've I've seen her and talk about these tough topics and and be vulnerable um, in front of adults dozens of times and I've been blown away she just sitting at dinner with her, she'll start talking and your jaw will drop. And every way, she's got this gravitational pull. And uh-huh. I can only imagine what it's like in front of kids. And I've heard I've heard people talk about her school visits being next level. And she just said, get up on stage and right away, just be as vulnerable and open as you can possibly be. More vulnerable and open than you ever thought you could possibly be. And as soon as those kids, those sixth, seventh, eighth graders, fifth graders, as soon as they see that, they are going to respect you and they are going to tune in like they wouldn't otherwise. And he, she just said, you know, go up there and rip off all those band-aids and just uh-huh. expose your, your, you know, those parts of yourself that you're maybe nervous about sharing. And that mm-hmm. will be that will be what they respect and and tune into. And she was so right. So I get up there and I just say, I tell them what the book is and that it's me and that I'm about to be as insecure and vulnerable as I can be. And hoping that at the end of the 45 minutes, we're going to get somewhere that's going to be really productive and awesome. And it, it's really impressed me how kids, every one of them is tuned yeah. in. You know, I really would have thought that there would be more kids sort of checked out or doing their own thing or sort of like rolling their eyes. And it's Uh been so delightful how much um, kids have been ready and willing and even eager to sort of go to this vulnerable place and, and, and talk about these topics. It's really been unexpectedly 
uh, amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, people respond to the real. They yeah. Just do. And, you know, working with kids every day, they carry these things. They carry these things. And a lot of my interactions with them as a teacher, you know, they happen in the classroom. And so there's the privacy of a room full of 20, 30 people. But to get to hear like, oh, there's another human being because it's the it can be the loneliest feeling in the world to be a yeah. kid and to be going through things. So uh, kudos for for powerful work there and for being willing to get up on a stage in front of young people and be a, a mentor and a model. Yeah, I honestly think um, I've been thinking that um, beyond even the specifics of the book, I think just to have another human in these kids' lives, even though I'm only in it briefly, to just have another, especially male, a grown yeah. male up on stage, just being vulnerable and talking about times that I was weak and couldn't do things and needed help and asked for help and um, was, you know, in a bad place. I think just the the example of that alone hopefully resonates beyond even the specifics of the book, if that doesn't connect with them. Um, well, and part of the power too, you you have the book. And so you've been that person and that face and that voice that they know. And so then they have, the, it's sort of this artifact of meeting you. Yeah. You know, sort of this, this letter to each other. And so every time that kid or that reader, you know, not just kids looks at that book, they're going to go, Oh yeah, that was that guy who said this. Right. And yeah. yeah. And it, it's cool. It's been interesting um, because some, some of these kids know my work uh, b before this book and it's you know a lot of times they say i i start these the presentation the the sessions i do with this book sort of saying why i chose to take this left turn in my career but i think it's also been cool to see kids and say um you know that dude can write about farting robots and super heroic taco ingredients and he's also got this you know mm -hmm. so the people who can be laughing and funny and silly they can also go through tough stuff, you know, it, hopefully it just yeah. makes it more comfortable for them to be like, everyone's got something, um, you know, everyone's got something they're dealing with, you know, no one's got a perfect day after perfect day after perfect day. Well, that, that's the thing I, I love too about hunger heroes or, you know, Giger or anything like that. Some people talk about humor and trying to be funny as a defense mechanism, but sometimes I just try to make sense of the world through humor because yeah. sometimes it's easier to laugh and sometimes it makes more sense to laugh um, because, the, you know, there are only so many ways you can process. Yeah. Humor is my lens for making sense and making sense in a way that's enjoyable to continue living through the world. And also humor for me has been a great way it's been for me the, the most effective way to get kids to tune in and trust me. And I find that once I make kids laugh at my workshops, my school visits in, 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 inside the covers of my books, once I get kids to laugh, they will go anywhere with me. It is this sort of like connection. I often talk about like, you're sitting on a train and uh, you're next to a stranger and something funny or silly happens and you both sort of look at each other and mm -hmm. you both connect over that, you're that much more likely to talk to that person and introduce yourself. And you, you just, something breaks down when you share a moment of humor. It's this mm -hmm. really quick way to connect. And I find that in my books, it like hunger heroes, I can get kids laughing for 70 pages and then I can make them delve into the backstory of this mean teacher and come out the other side, maybe having a lot of empathy for adults and teachers who they might think of as these, uh, you know, maybe strict authoritarian forces in their life. So humor for me, it's an end in and of itself, but it's also an incredible tool to start a conversation and to get kids to trust you and then lead them wherever you want to take them into more serious matters. Humor is also really smart. You know, I, I think there's always the class clown or a couple of class clowns. Um, and I think being the class clown, it's kind of like being an author. You know, you got to look at the world and to be really funny and to achieve humor that connects with people. You got to be really smart. 
you gotta you gotta look at the world in a unique way yeah yeah and uh pulling humor out of sometimes not humorous situations is also just um not easy and i mean you know i idolize a lot of uh stand-up comics and especially mm -hmm. when, when you when you hear them off stage just being interviewed and you hear how quick they are off the cuff but oh yeah i have the benefit of uh months and months and even years of revision for my humor to land so i'm not trying to say that i'm so good and i'm so funny because you know Often I'm I'm retooling these jokes for months until they land just right. So I'm not saying I'm the funniest person, but g give me a deadline and sufficient time, and I can I can whip up something funny. <laughs> and, and I can pull out those dad jokes, you know, year yeah. after year. Oh, I can perfect that. I, as yeah. a teacher, I get new seasons to try out new material. It's yeah, it's not a bad gig. It's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. I love left turns and I love the way that a work in progress stretches what I know about you. Uh, I always like to ask about what's next, what's in the creative pile, upcoming events, all of that kind of stuff too, so that readers can go, Oh yeah, there there's also this that's out there. And and I'll mention Giger the robot. Uh, we, we kind of alluded to that one and hunger heroes are also out there for people to enjoy. Yeah. So, um, I've got uh, what I've been working on just like the past few days. I've got these uh, Nat the Cat early readers. Um, and I think it's safe to say this. I think I'm allowed to. I haven't, we haven't officially put um, ink to contract, but it'll, it should happen any, any day now, maybe even today. Um, but I've got a bunch more Nat the Cats that will be coming out in the next couple of years. So I've been working on those. And then I've got two more chapter book series launching. Um, wow. One is a hybrid with comics and diary entries and letters. So you sort of never know what you're going to get. I sort of, a comp title I used for that to, to compare was um, the Jedi Academy books from um, 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 Jeff Brown. I just blanked on his name. Yeah, um, yeah. From Jeffrey Brown, which are fantastic, but they're sort of like that. And then I've got more of a text with spot illustration chapter book coming out. Um, so those will launch next year and then the year after. And um, I've also got some other things in the work. I'm, I'm co-writing a book um, that I'm hoping to take out on submission with one of my best uh, writing pals. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always, I've always got stuff cooking. Um, awesome. I try to, in this business, if you want a career and longevity, you really have to, you got to be focused on the current project on your desk, but you also got to be thinking three, four, five, six years down the line. So right. I've got a lot of irons in the fire, I guess. Yeah. And, and I love that too. I love the the breadth of what you do The you know, you can get these early readers and, and get kids reading young, which is such a big deal. It is such a big deal. Those are critical years. Um, yeah. And then kids can travel on with you to wh whatever the next book happens to be that they yeah. check out and that connects. So that's truly wonderful work. Thank you. Um, yeah. And my, I'm lucky that I, I work with Simon and Schuster and I'm on two of their imprints, but um, actually the, the person who runs both oversees both imprints is the same um, person. And she is very much into um they call it branding, but basically creating a body of work that kids can sort of move through as they age. So it's so fun and exciting to sort of give my readers all these sides of me and to think about them learning to read with my books and then maybe yeah. graduating and moving through these different forms and these different styles and stories. And, um, yeah, so thank you for recognizing that because it's definitely a purposely constructed and built thing that we're 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 going for, and it's it's a lot of fun and very fulfilling. And on the educator side, I'll say there's branding, but uh, then folks like me that take your voice to the classroom can think about like text ladders of, oh, this kid's really into this book. How do I keep them reading? How do I keep them growing? Okay. They've got this, this is next. The, they'll connect. Exactly. Yeah. Always trying to think like, and that's, yeah, 
And that's yeah. in, in the, in the, in the business meetings, they call it branding, but practically that's, that's what it is. And that's what they, that's what they're all about is, um, growing readers. And I've got two editors, but the, the majority of my books are with one editor and she, and I just click and we just get, we just, uh, appreciate each other's visions and, and they're very, they gel really well. And, um, I'm very lucky that we, a lot of our conversations are about the reader, but also about the people who are getting these books into the kids' hands. And are we giving educators, are we giving librarians, are we giving parents materials that they're going to enjoy themselves and also that they can use in a practical way to achieve what they want to achieve in their own work. So I'm trying to be the best colleague I can be to all the educators and librarians and parents out there and give them things their kids are going to want to read. And that will also help get them where these adults in their lives want to get them. Yeah. And here to say thank you and expressing gratitude. <laughs> thank um, you. Yeah. Glad to, glad to be part of the work. And um, I'll use, I'll use a word that my principal loves, which is synergy. It's a, it's, it's a great sort of relationship. It, it really, it really is between teachers, librarians um, and authors out there. Yeah. And I learned so much from all of you when I have a school visit or, you know, just chat, um, formally, informally, um, hearing what's going on and what the work that you're all doing and what's needed out there, it really informs my work. So it goes both ways. Awesome things. Well, I promised you a short conversation and I bet you have another Zoom meeting. I bet you have a contract to sign. Uh, you're probably drafting three things right now. You're probably drafting off screen as we're talking. That's probably, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, so so I won't keep you. Uh, did I miss anything that you want to make sure to put out into the world? Any uh, Anything at all that, that was on the list? Or no, off? this was great. These were great questions and got allowed me to talk about all these things I'm really passionate about. So I, I appreciate the questions a lot. Well, cool. Well, always glad to talk with you. Always uh, excited to see a new book on the way from you. And uh, we'll be glad to have you back on any time. And I think you and I might have a connection to make at the end of the summer as well for a presentation. So that'll be good things ahead as, as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Same. Thank you.